Hello, you guys! My name's Timster from Tim Foolery Gaming, and welcome to another one of our tea vlogs. At least that's what I'm gonna call it from here on out. This one's special because, like what you see in front of you, my tax return came in, and I decided to splurge a little bit on the Power Rangers Legacy Thunder Megazord set. Now, this is something I wanted since I was a kid, but because of financial circumstances, and as well as the fact that I didn't really get into Power Rangers as much until probably Zeo, and even then I didn't start collecting, like, seriously collecting the Megazords until probably Lost Galaxy or Lightspeed Rescue. You know, this was just one Megazord, or at least one season that I couldn't really invest myself into because I was just too young. But thankfully, the awesome people at Bandai decided to release a whole legacy toy line featuring stuff from Season 1 and 2, 3, and touching a little bit into Zeo. And that's where the Thunder Megazord comes from, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 2. For those who don't know the official history for the Power Rangers or the change of the Zords, in show, basically what happened was Lord Zed came in, a whole new villain, taking over for Rita's spot. He sent out a monster, froze the original Dino Zords, and those served as templates to create the Thunder Zords. With the Zords frozen, they couldn't get the Thunder Zords, so... Too long didn't read edition. Basically, the Rangers had to find a way to free their Zords, to create the Thunder Zords, which would be powerful enough to combat the new threat that is Lord Zed. Outside of show behind production, you know, behind the camera and everything, Basically, they were running out of Japanese footage they could use going forward, which was uh, Kyoryu Sentai's G-Ranger. They're running out of that uh, Super Sentai footage. I think when they were changing over to use the Gosei Sentai Dairanger footage, which is where the Thunder Zords came from, they had to find a way to incorporate the Thunder Zord scenes from Dairanger and mix it up with the Japanese Zidoranger footage and splice it together to make Season 2, or at least... The beginning part of Season 2. But anyway, enough of my nerd knowledge. I'm going to show you guys the Thunder Megazord set that we have right in front of you. And oh boy, this thing was expensive. And pretty big too. Let's check out the box before we really dive in here. And yeah! The box itself is pretty big. I can't even get it in the shot, but let's see. If I move it back some more... Ah, yeah. There we go. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Maybe not like that. But you get the idea. The box itself is pretty huge. Like, I'm recording this on my phone, so I don't think I can get the full image on camera. But it's huge. Let's see if we can check out the back real quick. Ah, oh, there's a Thunder Megazord in its beautiful glory. We'll be seeing that soon enough in person. Shows all the details. Shows what the Zords look like, and if we go over here, shows how they can combine with the Legacy Tiger Zord, which oddly enough was released before the Legacy Thunder Zord. Check out the side of the box, we do have some details, basically the story, summing up pretty much what I just said in different languages. Yeah, right there. If you would like, pause the video, check out the story, but not gonna bother too much. Alright, so with that, let's check out the individual Zords. Here's the Firebird Thunder Zord. Let's see if I can focus a little bit better. Not very good at these kind of vlogs. Now, I, like I said, I don't have the original Thunder Zord to compare these two. But from what I recall, the original Thunder Zord had stickers, which these do not. I don't know if you can tell very easily. Let's see if I can focus. There we go. Yeah, the detail is painted on and sculpted. It looks very nice. And originally, I don't think it the original Thunder Zord had the black trim along the wings here. Nor did it show any pink circles or lines or anything like that. But it looks really well detailed. Very light, though. Next up, we have the Lion Thunder Zord. And actually, my second favorite in the whole set. Let's see, back here we have the Thunder Sword head, which attaches to his butt, basically acting as a tail. We have the paws in the front. 
and everything is very nicely sculpted, very nicely detailed, painted, and actually is probably the heaviest of any of the Zords in this set. If nothing else, then because it feels like it might be made of some kind of metal or heavy plastic or something. Ooh, what's that spot? Get out of there. There we go. But yeah, I absolutely love this. This is definitely my second favorite of the set. And I know in the Japanese version, they do have different uh, different names for each of the individual Zords. But this is the Thunder Megazord, so we're going by the American version. And we check out the Griffin Thunder Zord. Yeah, I believe from what I remember, this part here was a sticker. But right now in this version, it is sculpted and painted and looks very nice. It, this one has some weight to it, much like the Unicorn, which we'll show in a second. Not as much as the Lion Thunder Zord, but looks pretty cool. The only thing I'm not too keen on is the mouth right here. I don't know if you can see it too well. Nope, focus on that guy there. There we go. Yeah, it's not that the mouth looks horrible or anything. It's just it doesn't open. It's sculpted shut. And that's kind of weird considering other toys in the Legacy line, mostly the Megazords, do have mouths that open and close. For some reason, only the Red Dragon in this set has an open, uh, open and closed mouth. It's definitely weird. But not at all bad, of course. Like I said, the Unicorn Thunder Zord. Basically the same kind of mold as the Griffin, but at the same time, it still looks pretty nice. I actually think it looks nicer in blue. <laughs> then again, black on blue looks really nice. Oh no, there's a hole that's its butt! <laughs> but yeah, same deal. It has a mouth, sculpted shut, does not open. Still looks pretty nice. <laughs> and, like I said, it has some weight to it. Not a lot of weight, but still. Now, for some reason, I put this way in the back, but we have the Red Dragon Thunder Zord, and this is a beast of a beast. Funny thing to note, originally when the Thunder Zords were released, I guess it came in two different waves. The first wave, it had the Thunder Zords, like the Lion, Griffin, all the other four. They were in a separate packaging called the Assault Team. They came on their own. The Red Dragon, however, came on his own as well. So you'd have to shell out money for the Red Dragon as well as the Assault Team. It was definitely a weird combination. Then I believe there was like a second wave, maybe in the UK, where all the Thunder Zords came together in one big packaging. So it was definitely weird. But yeah, here we have it. The Red Dragon Thunder Zord flying right by. Looks pretty awesome. Has some weight to it. No stickers involved. Everything is painted, sculpted, and very show accurate. How? Let's see if we can get a better image. Oh yeah, thumbnail worthy. How? <laughs> yeah, like I said, the original Thunder Zords had nothing but stickers and some paint here and there. These are all heavy duty paint, very well sculpted. And like I said, very show accurate compared to the original Thunder Zords. Again, I never had them. I've only seen like reviews and maybe a few, you know, sales going on Amazon, eBay, whatnot. But these are more show accurate because of the details and because like, I guess the original Thunder Zord had lightning bolts in certain places where the show, uh, you know, the Megazord on the show did not have those thunderbolts at all. So in the Legacy toy line, they made sure to make it so it's more show accurate than anything else. And it is just awesome. I'm so happy to have this in my possession. Now, for those who are familiar with the Thunder Zord and the Thunder Megazord and all that stuff, there is one thing you know about the Red Dragon Zord that I'm not doing, or that I'm going to do right now, and that is the Red Dragon Thunder Zord has an additional mode to it. Whereas the T-Rex was just the T-Rex before becoming the Megazord, the Red Dragon Thunder Zord has a dragon form as well as a warrior mode. Let's jump right in. And there he is, the Red Dragon Thunder Zord in warrior mode or battle mode or 
whatever you would like to call it. And it is fantastic looking. Yeah. Wait, did I do this part back here? I don't remember doing this part back here, guys. But it looks like it folded down on its own. I, that's new. But yeah, it does look absolutely amazing. And I don't know why. I like this mode so much better. Well, maybe not so much better, but I do like it compared to any other Megazord or Warrior mode that's ever been created so far. And possibly after it. I don't know. But I do absolutely like it. Everything is sculpted nicely, painted nicely. And it just looks so good. It it has definitely has weight to it. And I, I think I like that the most. The fact that it has weight does not feel like it was cheaply made or anything. But, of course, if you're familiar with the show... By the way, it's got some articulation. I'm not really good at showing that off. Like, the uh, fists right here can open... Let's see if I can get focus. There we go. The fists do open, and they do close. It's like he's supposed to hold something weird. And the, my favorite part, the head does move, as well as in Megazord mode. That is cool on its own. Most Megazords don't have their head move. Uh, but anyway, let's keep this up. Wow. Getting shot. Weird. I'm terrible at this. It's like I'm terrible or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, both his arms move. Uh, they do rotate. The fists do open. And I guess you get some articulation by twisting the legs. And they do come apart to kind of make the tail and neck area of the dragon mode. But beyond that, there's not much more articulation or not much more you can really do with it. The important thing is, however, he does have his staff. So let's get that in there. Get, wow. There we go. And close. So now let's see if I can get a better shot. There we go. The staff itself is also... I mean, it's hard to really mess up weapons when it comes to a toy set. But it is very nicely sculpted. And I do very much like how it looks. And that's the Red Dragon Thunderzord in a nutshell. However, we are not done yet. Oh, no. Because if you are familiar with the Thunderzord set, you know there's at least one other formation we can do. And it is not the Megazord. And there we have it. The Thunderzord, or the Thunder Megazord in Assault Mode. Basically... Let's see if I can show it off. The Red Dragon Zord would land onto the formation the Thunder Zords are in. And their only really maneuver is flying around at a very high speed. With their finishing move being the Red Dragon Thunder Zord in warrior mode would spin the staff around at a very high helicopter like speed, landing right on top of other monsters. At least that's what I remember. Might have been with Tor the, Th the uh, Shuttle Zord. Which, unfortunately, was never made into a legacy toy, so we won't be getting that with this set. But, yeah, I love this formation on its own, simply because it's a way to combine all the Zords in some basic mode or in one form or another. And just have them all in one spot, in one shot, like this. So I absolutely love it. But, of course, we are not done. Now it's time to assemble the Thunder Megazord itself. And there he is, the Thunder Megazord itself. And it looks very cool. I actually... I hate to say, I like this so much better than the original Megazord. Mostly because of how it looks, the weapons it can come with, and just its overall design. Like, well, let's compare it. Well, I don't have the Legacy Dino Megazord, when I was a kid, my grandmother found this at a yard sale back in, like, early 2000s, late 90s. And I'm sure you guys have seen it before in my collection. The original, original toy version of the Season 1 Megazord. Let's see if I can stand them side by side. 
and you'll see a very noticeable size comparison. Thunder Megazord is much taller. Also, quick note about the Thunder Megazord. There are some original releases out there where there was a bit of a leaning issue. If you look at mine, I kind of have that but not nearly as much. They found a way to fix it so he's not leaning as much, but that's in like the later waves. The original versions will have that leaning issue, but the later ones, not so much. And the later ones are the ones you can find today. But anyway, yeah, comparing the original Dino Megazord that was originally released with Power Ranger Season 1 came out versus the Legacy Thunder Megazord. Like, I will always love the original. But I love Thunder because of how he looks. It looks less of a robot, less of a brick, and more of like a Chinese warrior of some kind. Maybe Japanese? I'm um, not really good at my, uh, <laughs> my lore in that regard. But I do like it, and I do love how it looks. But it is nice to see Season 1 and Season 2 Megazords standing side by side. Something we never got and never will get because of the in-canon reason why the Thunder Zords exist anyway. We'll move him to the side for now. Let's see. There we go. But yeah, a few things to note. The original Thunder Megazord, the green cockpit right here could open up and you could put in like little tiny figures of the Rangers inside it. And while that was cool at the time, and I wish we still kept it, the mold of the Legacy Thunder Megazord does not have that ability, unfortunately. The middle piece does not open up. It does, however, come with some nifty weapons, such as the sword right here. It would go right here and attach onto the wing and it, of the uh, Firebird. And it still does. It's just for all intents and purposes right now, I'm not going to equip it. But let's check out the sword real quick. This is turning more into a review, review than an actual vlog. <laughs> let's see. There we go. Nice detail. Nice sculpt. Everything looks nice. There is no stickers involved, only paint. But if you unsheathe the sword, let's see if I can do it. There we go. Look at that. A nice, shiny, chrome-like sword. It looks fantastic. Again, I don't have the original Thunder Megazord or the saber it came with. So I cannot compare this to anything else besides its own self and by memory. But if memory serves right, based on the reviews I've seen and stuff, the Saber was, I would say, flimsy, kind of rubbery. This one, yeah, still pretty flimsy, but made of a chrome material, and it looks really nice when it's all shiny like that. So let's cheese it back in there. Yeah. It also comes with a weapon we've never actually seen on the show. When you combine the staff the Red Dragon Zord was using with the tail of the Fire Thunder Zord, Firebird Thunder Zord, it creates this unique looking staff, which I think the Die Ranger Mecha. Oh, that's not on all the way. Yeah, which I think the Die Ranger Mecha Dyrano. Dyrano? I think that's how it's called. Anyway, I guess he used the staff more often than our American Thunder Megazord did. And I kind of wish he still used a staff because it looks really well going alongside him. Again, I would put it in his hand just to show it off, but for all intents and purposes, I'm going to leave it out. But it looks pretty cool, and I like that. So aside from all that, I guess there's not really much else to show off. I only have the Thunder Megazord, so it's not like I can combine it with another White Tiger or Green Dragon Zord or something like that. That would just be silly. Wait a minute! What? Zoom in or focus. What? <laughs> Yeah, I splurged a little bit more. I got the White Tiger Thunder Zord. I had to. It was a package deal with these two. Well, not really, but... You know, I had to get it. I can't get one without the other. Now, before we actually show this off properly, I did have the Thunder Tiger Zord, or Tiger Thunder Zord, wow, when I was a kid. But it was a remote-controlled one. It did not transform. And this just brings back memories of having that, simply because it's in Tiger Zord mode right now. All right, but let's put Thunder Megazord aside and show this guy off. Tiger Zord, power up! So yeah, here he is, the Tiger Thunder Zord, and it looks absolutely beautiful, absolutely fantastic. 
While I do love the Thunder Megazord in its own right, it's a very hard uh, competitor in terms of favorite Zords. But this guy looks really cool. Very well detailed, very well sculpted, I believe. Everything looks nice. No Thunderbolts in place. And I guess originally the uh, red orbs here, they would just like bulge out and you could just take them off. So whenever you see one on eBay, these would always be missing or something. But it looks really cool and I love it. There's not much for articulation other than the front legs can move forward, backward. Same with the rear legs, as you can see right here, it kind of moves forward, moves backward. You can't really pose it all that well. And let's see if I can get the mouth to open. There we go. It actually kind of does look like a tongue when it's downward like that. But yeah, the mouth does open up. Again, which is weird considering only the Tiger Zord and the Red Dragon Zord in the set have mouths that open. A little bit of a background with the Tiger Zord. Basically, Green Ranger is introduced. He survived through most of Season 1, bits of Season 2. Uh, the owner of the Green Ranger powers, Tommy, lost his powers due to a green candle and some monster that decided to drain his powers for Lord Zed. And thusly, Tommy lost his Green Ranger powers, which means goodbye, Dragon Zord, all that stuff. Not that long after, Tommy comes back as the White Ranger, and with new powers comes the ability to pilot a new Thunder Zord, the White Tiger Zord. Meaning the Dragon Zord is somewhere in the ocean still. Interesting. But, much like the Red Dragon Zord, this White Tiger Zord can transform. Tiger Zord, convert to warrior mode! And there we are, the White Tiger Thunder Zord in warrior mode. Let's see if we move him back a bit, get more in the shot, maybe move the camera up, because I am uh, not a very good director. <laughs> but yeah, definitely looks awesome. Everything looks nicely sculpted. Again, no stickers involved whatsoever. Speaking of which, on the side here actually shows his emblem. And I don't know if you can really... See it all that well. Let's zoom in a bit. Zoom in on the paw. Yeah, it kind of bulges out a bit. The emblem does. And I think that's really nice for a Megazord. Especially the Tiger Zord like this. It looks really cool and I love it. Again, I never had the Thunder Zords when I was a kid. Just the remote controlled White Tiger Zord. It didn't transform though. But you know what? I'm just happy to get my tax refund this year. And I'm happy the Legacy Toy Line came out. Because this thing looks absolutely amazing. Also, his tail becomes a Megazord version of Saba. I mean, not you know to the scale, but it looks really nice and I do love it. Again, not going to put it in his hand for practical reasons. However, if you're familiar with Season 1, the Dragon Zord could combine with other Zords within that era. Such as the Triceratops, Sabertooth Tiger, and Mastodon. Tiger Zord can do the same thing. Let's show it off. Mega Tiger Zord transformation now. And there we have it, the Mega Tiger Thunder Zord, or the Thunder Ultra Zord, or there were many different names, but I'm going to call it the Tiger, the Thunder Tiger Mega Zord, just because it incorporates different parts of the original Thunder Mega Zord within the Tiger Zord itself, and I think that's a cool concept we haven't seen too much of in Power Rangers, having like the Six Ranger Zord combined with the other Zords. To form its own Megazord in a similar fashion as a standard Megazord. How many times can I say Megazord in a sentence? Apparently that much, because now I am winded. <laughs> so let's compare the Tiger Thunder Megazord with the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. For a size comparison, and you can tell... Yeah. With all the other Thunder Zords combined with the Tiger Zord. Very much outscales the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. And thusly, the Thunder Megazord itself. But man, does it look really cool to have all six together. Now, like I said before, there... 
I would like to say there were plans to incorporate uh, Tor the Shuttle Zord, the green turtle looking Zord, but I don't know if it'll ever happen. I don't think it will, because the latest legacy Megazord we got was the Ninja Megazord, which I actually have right here. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah, that was a, the latest legacy Megazord we got in the set. And that was in Season 3. Thunderzords are Season 2. So most likely we're not going to get a tour of the Shuttle Thunderzord. Because Bandai made the Legacy Thunderzords and the Legacy Megazords. Or even the whole Legacy toy line. Since then, uh, Saban has passed off ownership to Hasbro. Which I believe also passed the ownership of the toy line from Bandai to Hasbro. So if we are going to get anything more from the Season 2 toy line... It's not going to be by Bandai. I don't know if it's going to be made by the same sculptors, the same people. Wow, sorry for the camera issues. Uh, but yeah, if we are going to get Tor, it's not going to be anytime soon, if ever. Weird thing about combining into the Tiger Thunder Megazord, or Thunder Tiger Me wherever I said it, I can't remember now. But either way, funny thing about it is, originally, I don't believe you had to remove any pieces of any of the Zords to do it. But you might notice right down there on the unicorn and the griffin, you had to remove these silver parts, which were part of the Thunder Megazord's legs. And even weirder still, you had to remove these pieces, which were, let's see if I can unfold them. I didn't really show it off too well, but the rear legs of the Tiger Zord in order to make that formation. So... That is definitely a weird thing, but also keep in mind, the Legacy Tiger Zord was made within the Zord Builder line, which meant if you had the original Dino Megazord that came like in 2013 around that era, as well as the Dragon Zord within that same Legacy toy line, they could combine with the Tiger Zord. And I guess there's a special combination using the Dragon Zord from that era and combining it with the Tiger Zord of that era. Speaking of though, I compared the original Dino Megazord with the Thunder Megazord. I never compared the Dragon Zord to the Tiger Zord. Hmm. All right, so we got the Tiger Zord on standby. Like I said, the Dragon Zord is still in the sea and there's only one way to call it. With the legacy Dragon Dagger, which I will show off and compare in just a second. But of course, we need to summon him. So let's see if this will work. And holy crap baskets, it did! We summoned the Dragon Zord alongside the Tiger Zord. And honestly, they both look pretty awesome together. Now, in the same vein of the Megazord, the original one, while I didn't get the Dragon Zord at the same time at the same yard sale like my grandmother did, I did buy this in, let's see, 2010, 2011 as a Christmas present to myself. And I... You know, I had to get it. It was before they released the Legacy toy line. So I wasn't aware that there was going to be a Legacy Dragon Zord. So this is the original, original Dragon Zord alongside the Legacy Tiger Zord in Warrior Mode. Side by side, they look awesome and goes very well with the episode coming up that I'm about to watch. Which is the Green Ranger versus the White Ranger. And this just looks absolutely fantastic side by side. Another comparison I didn't really do, however, would be the Red Dragon Thunder Zord standing next to the White Tiger Thunder Zord. And while not as impressive simply because they are Zords within the same timeline, or the same toy line, they do look pretty cool next to each other. I, I, I gotta admit, it makes me all the more glad I got them both at the same time. God, I love the Thunder set. But wait! There's more, as I hinted at previously. There we go. I don't know how this is going to look on video. 
But comparing the two, on the right is the original Dragon Dagger. You would get, not with the Dragon Zord, but with a Green Ranger action figure. On the left, let's see, it's a little bit shinier, but it is a Legacy Dragon Dagger. I can't really show off the sounds all that much. You heard it when I was summoning the Dragon Zord. But the sounds for the Legacy Dragon Dagger, much better compared to the original. Cooler still, the mouthpiece here. That is actually what activates the sound. You press and hold it down using your chin or your thumb. And you press any one of these buttons right here. It'll activate one of different sounds to summon the Dragon Zord. As well as start the MMRPR theme song. The buttons on themselves do like, you know, slashes, damage sounds, battle sounds, that, that kind of stuff. Basically, it has several more and different, better sounds than the original Dragon Dagger did. And overall, just looks beautiful. They do have holsters for the Dragon Dagger, especially the Legacy one. I may buy one later, I'm not sure. But it's awesome that they came out with something so amazingly detailed. It's all sculpted, all painted, all chrome, all die-cast metal. Compared to the original Dragon Dagger, which has, you know, stickers. Some very odd choices for paint. Very plastic, very lightweight. Still, I was glad to have one Dragon Dagger. Now I've got two. So yeah, all together, Thunder Megazord, Tiger Zord, and the Legacy Dragon Dagger. So yeah, all things considered, I think I made a pretty good haul. All this was bought at GameStop and well worth the price. However, it did cost a pretty penny. As you can tell, right on the far right... Tiger Zord was 80 bucks. Don't even want to mention how much the Thunder Megazord was, let alone the Dragon Dagger. Again, the only reason I got any of this was because of a tax refund. So, if you've got the money to do whatever you wish with, I would recommend if you're a Power Rangers fan. Otherwise, you know, just wait for a price drop. Uh, so, aside from that, just to give a little bit of an update with the channel itself, videos will be up... You're probably going to see this Monday. If it's Monday for you, great. If not, I hope I didn't mess up somewhere. Uh, otherwise, videos should be up Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If nothing goes wrong, you should see them on the dot at 4 p.m. Aside from that, nothing too new on my end. Just want to show off some toys. <laughs> and I believe that will be it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of the toys. If there's anything you want to check out, anything I haven't done in this video you really wish to see, I'll do a quick update video and show it off. So with that, my name is Tim Sir from Tim Foldery Gaming, and we will see you all later. Take care.